Hi everybody and welcome to game night. Tonight we are playing the guessing game. I will be telling you a few things about what I want you to guess. So some of the things will be, uh, we'll be doing figures, we'll be doing characters, uh, we'll be doing some historical icons. We're getting this from a game called Monikers and uh, it's pretty interesting. We took a look at some of the cards and let's just say they're really, really wordy, but I think that's the point of the game. They want you to think and make it harder for you. So we picked out one easy card and we're gonna give you an example of this card right now. So let's go ahead and pop that up if we can. So here's what I mean by wordy. They're trying to throw you off here. It says flying communal insects that are found on every continent except Antarctica. They often live in large hives known as colonies with a queen Workers and drones, many species of these produce honey, which humans harvest in a series of hives known as an apiary. Notice that was really, really, really worthy. Oh, I better get my mic on. <laughs> I'm going to put that right here. So notice that that was really, really, really wordy. Here is the answer to that question. It is actually bees. So you see what I'm talking about. So we're gonna be asking you 20 questions tonight. Each question is worth one point if you get it right. So I will let you guys get a sheet of paper and a pencil, and hopefully you'll be playing along with us this evening. Uh, like I said, these questions are wordy. If it looks like it's really hard, I read through some of these, uh, I'll give you an easy hint because most of the time the answers are, like I said, pretty easy. All right, here is the first one. Do you have your pens, your paper, your pencils? Okay, here we go. The personification of the nanny state, which comes from Oceana's totalitarian leader, George Orwell's novel, 1984. He is frequently reminded to be watching you through an instance of the novel's double think. The expression is both a veiled threat and a reassurance. All right, think about it. The personification of the nanny state, which comes from Oceana's totalitarian leader, George Orwell's novel, 1984. If you've read the book, you may know the answer to this question. So I'm gonna look here. If you guys are still guessing and you're not sure, um, well, I'll give you a hint. Here is a hint. Are we gonna see it here, anybody? Does anybody got, have this one? Okay, so here's your hint. The easiest way to describe this is it's a show where people live together and they're filmed. All right, here we go. Let's go for the answer. It is Big Brother. Like I told you, these are kind of difficult. All right, let's go to the next question. A street magician known for his sleight of hand, silly endurance challenges, and being, well, he's kind of a jerk. His stunts include getting buried for a long time, standing on a pole for a long time, holding his breath for a long time, and freaking Ricky Gervais out by actually stabbing himself. All right, think about it again. A street magician known for his sleight of hand, silly endurance challenges, and being kind of a jerk. Do you guys know who it is? Oh, we got some good questions. Oh, hi, Amy, how are you? All right, guys, let's try this again. A street mu magician, he did some stunts where he threw cards against a window uh, that people had picked and they stuck to the window. It was pretty cool. All right, let's go for the answer here. It is David Blaine. All right, next question. An American folk hero and steel driving man. Now, in this myth, he competed against a steam-powered hammer to determine who could drill into a rock the fastest. He wins the competition, but here's the sad part, his heart gives out, and he dies before being able to fully celebrate his victory. This is a American folk hero and steel driving man. In the myth, he competed against a steam-powered hammer to determine who could drill into the rock the fastest. He wins a competition, but his heart gives out, and he dies before being able to fully celebrate his victory. Okay, guys, who is it? Hey, Ricky, you got it. Good job. Good job, Mike. 
All of you. Okay, the answer is John Henry. You guys were right. Okay, next question. A costumed role player who appears in public as a fictional character. Dress is often inspired by, forgive me all you anime fans and, and comic book fans, I think it's manja or manga, I'm not too sure. I think manja is Italian for eating, manja, manja, manja. So I'm going to say manga. Anime, comic books, video games, and films, really anything from nerd culture. While not synonymous, there is some overlap with LARPers, furries, and reenactors. So again, a costumed role player who appears in public as a fictional character, dresses often inspired by anime, comic books, video games, and films, really anything from nerd culture. While not synonymous, there is some overlap with LARPers, furries, and reenactors. Okay, what did you guys guess? And Mike, you got it again. The answer is a cosplayer. Those are pretty cool. They have great conventions, by the way, if you have been to any of those. Uh, some really, they spend a lot of money on those outfits. Very creative. Okay, this one I thought was interesting because some of this stuff I didn't know about this person. Next question. The creator of annoying antivirus software, that should be your first clue, who in 2012 fled Belize for Guatemala under suspicion of murder. Vice Media accidentally gave away his location and he was deported to the U.S. He's often photographed shirtless with a young woman and assault weapons. So, have any of you guessed this one? Let's try again. Think of annoying antivirus software. That's probably your best clue. So he was the creator of it. He fled in 2012 to Belize for Guatemala, fled Belize for Guatemala under suspicion of murder. Vice Media accidentally gave away his location and he was deported to the U.S. He's often photographed shirtless with young women and assault weapons. Did anyone get it? Hey, LaFonda White, you are all right. Here we go. The answer is John McAfee. We all know how annoying that software is. So one two, three, four, five. If you've got those, give yourself five points. All right, here's the next question. This is the first mammal to be cloned from an adult stem cell. Taken from a mammary gland, she proved that a cell from a spe specific body part could be used to replicate a new individual. She died at 6.5 years old of progressive lung disease, which is fairly common to her species. The first mammal to be cloned from an adult stem cell. Taken from a mammary gland, she proved that a cell from a specific body part could be used to replicate a new individual. She died at 6.5 years old of progressive lung disease, and that is fairly common to her species. Have you guessed it yet? You got it? All right. Let me see. Hey, good job. Okay, for those of you having a little trouble, uh... Yes, you're right. You guys are good. You got it. Okay, here's the answer. Dolly the sheep. Good job, guys. All right. The next one. This one's pretty cool. This one should be a little bit easier on the first try. Here we go. Next question. A mythological hybrid whose top half is human and whose bottom half is a horse. The Greeks considered them savage, drunken beings. The myth persists today, including a famous tattoo of half Patrick Swayze, half horse, and SNL's depiction of one of these on a failed job interview. A mythological hybrid whose top half is human and bottom half is horse. The Greeks considered them savage, drunken beings. The myth persists today, including a famous tattoo of half Patrick Swayze, half horse, and SNL's depiction of one of these on a failed job interview. It's also recently been shown, well, I guess it wasn't. That was a motorcycle part, wasn't it? It was kind of the same theory. So what is it? Okay, good job, guys. Ready? It is a centaur. You were right. Next question. I like this one. This one's pretty cool. This reminds me of childhood. Okay. Initially a villain in the McDonald Land universe. This purple monster was reticoned. Uh-oh. They're using big words. <laughs> As a lovable hero, 
He also appears in a meme featuring a crudely drawn version posing seductively and asking Ronald McDonald if he wants some McNuggies. So, it was initially a villain in the McDonald Land universe. It was a purple monster. He appears in a meme featuring a crudely drawn version posing seductively and asking Ronald McDonald if he wants some McDuggies. All right, who is it? Ooh, keep going. He's purple, guys. He's purple. He's purple. Think about it. I know what you were thinking. That was good. You said Hamburglar. That's not him. It was the purple one. I'm going to give you a few more seconds to think about it. He was a purple monster. All right, are you ready? Three, two, one. The answer is Grimace. Yeah, I always think of Hamburglar, too. All right, next question. A hairdresser who created the iconic wedge bob cut of the 60s. He parlayed his fame into international brand of beauty products that included salons, shampoos, conditioners, and commercials featuring the tagline, if you don't look good, we don't look good. All right, that should have been your clue. Again, here's a question again. A hairdresser who created the iconic wedge bob of the 60s. He parlayed his fame into international brands of beauty products that included salons, shampoos, conditioners, and commercials featuring the tagline, if you don't look good, we don't look good. Okay, let me see your guesses. Think about it. Ooh, somebody got it. Yeah, I thought of that guy too. That's what I first read when, I, when we played this game. Hey, there we go. Here's the answer, guys. Vidal Sassoon, Sassoon hair products. If you don't look good, we don't look good. Okay, this is halfway through the game, so this is our number 10 question. Give yourself a point for every one that you got right. This was interesting, I thought, as well. Most of you will probably get this one. All right, co-founder of the world's most popular social networking site before Facebook. He became instantly recognizable because all users who joined the site would automatically friend him. He sold the site for $580 million to Rupert Murdoch's News Corporation. This is a co-founder of the world's most popular social networking site before Facebook. You might still have an account with it. <laughs> he became instantly recognizable because all users who joined the site would automatically friend him. He sold the site for $580 million to Rupert Murdoch's News Corporation. So who is this? Tom, Tom, you're right. Ready? MySpace, Tom. You got that right, guys. All right, so that we are at the halfway point. Count up your points. Um, one point for each card. 20 is what you can make. So a little history one here for all of you history buffs. All right, next question. A World War II icon who represented American women working factory jobs. She is most often associated with the we can do it, a uh, Westinghouse poster which depicted her as flexing in a blue work shirt and a red kerchief in her hair. Her Canadian precursor was Ronnie the Bryn Gun Girl. So think about 1940s posters. There's your clue right there. A World War II icon who represented American women working factory jobs. She's most often associated with a we can do it Westinghouse poster depicting her flexing a blue work shirt and a red kerchief. Her Canadian precursor was Ronnie the Bryn Gun Girl. I didn't know that last part. Okay. Wow, you guys are good. Keep going. And the answer is Rosie the Riveter. Okay. And uh, my husband loves this show, so here's your clue for this. I know all the guys are instantly going to be typing this in. Ladies, I don't know if you'll get this one right off the bat. So here's a question. The best friend, wingman, volleyball partner, and radar intercept officer for Maverick in the film Top Gun. Played by Anthony Edwards, he was tragically killed during a training exercise when he broke his neck, ejecting from an F-14 aircraft. I bet all the guys are already putting this one in. Top Gun movie, guys. The best friend, wingman, 
Volleyball partner and radar intercept officer of Maverick in the film Top Gun, played by Anthony Edwards, he was tragically killed during a training exercise when he broke his neck ejecting from an F-14 aircraft. Do you have it? You do have it. The answer is Goose. It's a good show. Okay, here's one for the art lovers. Next question. An American modernist painter whose work was inspired by the New Mexico landscape surrounding her home. She is perhaps most famous for the uncanny resemblance of many of her painted flowers to female parts, though she denied any similarity. An American modernist painter whose work was inspired by the New Mexico landscape surrounding her home. She is perhaps most famous for the uncanny resemblance of many of her painted flowers to female parts, though she denied any similarity to it. Do you know this person? Think hard. They would be big flowers. Big flowers, New Mexico artists. Okay. We may have stumped you on this one. Are you ready? The answer is Georgia O'Keeffe. All right, this one's a fun one if you like to play board games. Next question. A character from the board game Clue, he was originally named Yellow, but had his name changed to this condiment instead. In Hasbro's latest update, he is now a former football player. In the classic film adaptation, he was played by Martin Mull. Okay, so are you guys ready for this? A character from the board game Clue, he was originally named Yellow, but had his name changed to his, a condiment instead. In Hasbro's latest update, he's now a former football player. In the classic film adaptation, he was played by Martin Mull. Do you know this one? Yes, you got it. You got it. Keep going. All right, you guys are smart. You ready? Colonel Mustard. All right, next question. This is also for gamers. And here it is. The organizer and storyteller in a fantasy role-playing campaign. This is most often associated with D&D. &D, and they manage all aspects of the game other than direct actions of the player characters and are commonly seen rolling 20-sided dice behind a protective cardboard screen. The organizer and the storyteller in a fantasy role-playing campaign, most often associated with D&D, &D, they manage all aspects of a game other than the direct actions of the player characters and are commonly seen rolling 20-sided dice behind a protective cardboard screen. And some of the people at work join in on this game and play it. Do we know what it is? Oh, a lot of you do. All right, here we go. The answer is a dungeon master. You're correct. We're going to throw it back a little bit. Uh, this is a celebrity category. An actor and musician who starred in Knight Rider and Baywatch. His daughter once recorded a video of him shirtless and drunk trying to eat a hamburger on the floor of a Las Vegas hotel room while she lectured him on the importance of sobriety. By the way, the Germans absolutely love this guy. They worship him. All right, your clue was right at the top. An actor and musician who starred in Knight Rider and Baywatch. His daughter recorded him shirtless and drunk trying to eat a hamburger on the floor of a Las Vegas hotel room while she lectured him on the importance of sobriety. And the Germans love him. Oh, yeah. Yep. You got it. A lot of people know this one. Ready? David Hasselhoff. Okay. This is throwing back way back into the day. Next question. A member of a fictional R&B group composed of anthropomorphic... Did I say that right? <laughs> I can't speak today. I'm having trouble. Okay, so composed of dried grapes from the West Coast. They came to prominence in claymation form, singing a cover of... I heard it through the grapevine. That's it in an advertisement. They were also popular as plastic toys. And I remember this because my sister loved them. She wanted to play with them all the time. So a member of a fictional R&B group composed of dried grapes from the West Coast that came to prominence in claymation form, singing a cover of I Heard It Through the Grapevine in an advertisement. They were also popular as plastic toys. And I didn't know this. Didn't they do a Christmas album? Yeah, they actually sang a Christmas album as well. 
Who has it? Oh, you're close. Yep. You got it. The answer is California Raisin. That is perfect. All right, history buffs, listen up. The rest of you, this should be pretty easy when you think about it. All right. The title of John Montague, who the 18th century British noble who invested, invented using two slices of bread as a wrapper for food, the legend is that he was an avid gambler who did not have time for meals between card games, so he would have servants bring him meat between two slices of bread. The title, okay, it's the title of John Montague, the 18th century British noble who invented using two slices of bread as a wrapper for food. The legend is that he was an avid gambler who did not have time for meals between card games, so he would have his servants bring him meat between two slices of bread, and most of us probably have them almost every day. Yeah, you got it. Okay, you ready? It is the Earl of Sandwich. Some of you put Lord, but good enough. The Earl of Sandwich. Okay, we're winding down, guys. Two more questions left. This one's going to be fun. All right. An athletic performer from the country south of the U.S. Matches are between two fighters and are typically won by pinning an opponent to the mat for three seconds. Performers wear colorful masks that both conceal their identity and they look absolutely fabulous. So again, an athletic performer from the country south of the U.S. Matches are between two fighters and are typically won by pinning an opponent to the mat for three seconds. Performers wear colorful masks that both conceal their identity and look fabulous. Do you guys know this? I'll give you a hint. What was the name of the movie? Nacho Libre. Nacho Libre. If you've seen the movie Nacho Libre, it was what the guy wanted to be. I'll give you another hint. Oh, here is Nacho Libre. Nacho Libre, right there. Okay, what are these guys called, these fighters called? Yeah, there we go. Yep. Yep. <laughs> okay, ready? A Mexican wrestler or luchador. A Mexican wrestler or luchador. So give yourself a point for that. Okay, last question. All of you should get this. It should be so easy. You'll get it in two seconds. I thought this was cool. It was in the game, actually. The subject of a 24-hour media frenzy in 1987 when she fell down a well, setting a precedent of how cable news networks cover small local tragedies. At the time, President Ronald Reagan claimed that, quote, everybody in America became her godmothers and godfathers. The subject of a 24-hour media frenzy in 1987 when she fell down a well, setting a precedent of how cable news networks cover small local tragedies. At the time, President Ronald Reagan claimed, quote, everybody in America became her godmothers and godfathers, end quote. Who do we have? You got it. Good job, guys. And the answer is baby Jessica. You're absolutely right. So 20 questions. Count them up amongst yourselves. Uh, see how many points you got. Let me know. Did you like these questions? Again, this came from a new game. Uh, one of my coworkers. She dropped it off at the house. It's kind of cool. What was it called? Monikers. Monikers. It was called Monikers. Anyways, a little difficult, a little wordy, but I think they do that on purpose so it makes you think it's not too, too easy. Uh, we want to let you know, Friday night, we will be doing trivia night. Yay! <laughs> And we're going to be doing 80s trivia. We're going to try to make it easy because I know a lot of you are not from the 80s. But I'm pretty sure you'll know some of these iconic things we'll be asking you. Should be fun. We hope to see you then. Same bat time, same bat channel right here on Facebook at 830 Friday night. Join us for 80s night. Thanks for playing, guys. Have a great evening.